you wanted to have verifiable um, archival processes that would last that long, including the, the construction of the facilities that would house them. You know, so even at the time, um, there was uh, the first vault that was built was in New Mexico, and that was done into the side of a mountain. So it was done that if, if people start sleuthing a little bit, there's a few New Mexico articles about when they invited um, our port captain who's in charge of the public relations named Jane McNairn. Um, she hosted the, I think it was the mayor and the sheriff of the local town to next to Trementina. And because there had been an incident <laughs> um, prior to me getting there, but right kind of concurrently with me getting there, um, what was the incident? where one of the, the incident was basically when they got the New Mexico property, they were creating a lot of pat like roads that hadn't been there because they were cutting out um, the, the, where the vault was going to go, um, the landing strip, um, and then like the caretaker home, they're all in different parts and, and where the LRH house was going to go. So it backs up to BLM land mm -hmm. and they cut a road across BLM land. Well, the Bureau of Land Management sent a couple guys out and the CST people <laughs> met them with guns. So, and, what? and the shore story. <laughs> so so well, the and, Sea Org members, because they are Sea Org members. Yes, they are right? Sea Org members. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying because the Church of Spiritual Technology, CST, which mm -hmm. is a Sea Organization organization, was building all this. They put a road right across BLM land. And so. Yeah, kind of kitty corner. It was just like about a mile, but mm -hmm. it like definitely cut across BLM land. <laughs> there was no doubt about it. Which you're not uh, supposed to do. No, that's yeah. You, I think you can if you get approval, but it, like after, you know, it's like kind of, it's that whole Scientology thing. You ask for permission afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like they've been violating so, their permit all over the place at these right. openings. So right, the authorities exactly. they show up to be like, "Hey, what are you guys doing with this road?" And you're saying Sea Org members met them with guns. Well, they carried guns in the truck, and because there was it's it was pretty much un um develop so it was pretty wild land, and it's out in the middle of nowhere so there's you know more wildlife than people um so yeah. it wasn't uncommon to have you know some kind of device to protect yourself um sure. but they we at the time it was we had a shore story because we we hadn't had tax exemption yet so um we were like oh no we just preserve religious materials and documents and you know, it was, we were very, we were supposed to be very vague in all aspects of every vase or base about what our actual, per, which is a standard data series. You know, you, you generate a shore story basically. Yeah. Which is and, a lie, but it's Scientology speak. <laughs> right. It's a, yeah, it's a Scientology lie. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. What that was the happening with the road and all that. So they, instead of like de-escalating, the the CST staff kept, left made that left left them with more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. So they promptly went and investigated, figured out it was Scientology, figured out it was the Church of Spiritual Technology. This whole big kerfuffle kind of happened. Yeah. Um. We got people from our end, RPF. They were sent down to Int clean up um and it was sort of gloss i mean it was sort of fixed yeah. um because there was no there was no weird like we weren't doing anything that we weren't supposed to be other than violating private property or bureau of land management property so um, wow so it was kind of a you know it was a contentious and everywhere like it was it's if you look at scientology's history it's exactly how they moved into florida that's true. Secret. Right? It's the same. It's so their MO never changes. Yeah, they <laughs> were out there with guns. Right. Well, and they came in under the United Churches of Florida and yeah. like, hey, we want to buy this church, you know, this this hotel. And it's like, surprise, we're Scientology. And it's and that was the whole, it's all premeditated. Like that's the whole idea behind it, is that nothing Scientology does is haphazard. It's all based on policy. And it's all carefully orchestrated. It's all carefully investigated and orders are done like orders to the T like 
fly yourself to this place, check into this place, do the like it's they that's how they run things. So yeah, so know, when everything's were, yeah. Sorry, the, okay. So was the first the first one you're saying was in New Mexico? That was the first vault that was built. That was um, built. the the main base was always up at um, Lake Arrowhead, or the surrounding towns are basically Crestline, Rim Forest, um, Twin Peaks, and Lake Arrowhead is actually further away, closer to Big Bear. Yeah. But because that's the main, and that was one of the things, even being staff up there, is you referred to the base by different names to different people. Hmm. So it was you're in Scientology or not in Scientology? Uh, well, we didn't really deal at CST. We didn't deal with anybody like anybody we dealt with, with in Scientology was either like author services or int. Mm. So, and none of them knew. So we had to be very careful when we went to int. Um, like we couldn't tell them, Hey, I'll be there in two hours. Also you know, we, people at yeah, the was, confidential international Hemet base where everybody, but Scientologists knew where it was that where, where international management was considered to be was right. going, they could not even know where you were. There were people at CST that didn't know where the external bases were. You mean, like, so there were people at this, this church of spiritual technology run by the Sea Org. Mm -hmm. You're saying who yeah. didn't know where these secret underground vaults were. The other ones besides the main base. Yeah. Besides their didn't. own one. So they would know if you're in mm -hmm. New Mexico, you're like, okay, I'm in New Mexico at the secret Scientology underground base. <laughs> yeah. You never said that. You well, only certain people would leave the main base to yeah. go to external bases. And you never were like, Hey, I'm heading to New Mexico. <laughs> you know, like you, wouldn't do that. <laughs> you were just like, that's not happening. <laughs> so tell me, tell me this. I'm so curious about, so there's this plan because L. Ron Hubbard at some point said, hey, you better like preserve all my stuff because if there's like an apocalypse, people are going to need Scientology to restart society. Was that kind of the feel? Absolutely. It was. Um, and it was also the um, not to get off on a, on a tangent, but it's kind of the Gnostic idea that like LRH, the way his history came about. The only way that he could truly fulfill his quote unquote whatever dream or, or vision is <laughs> to become a kind of a deity himself. And, and the only way to do that is to preserve your name and your works for all eternity. Wow. So in the end, that and that's kind of that even plays into why there was never supposed to be another leader in Scientology. It, the org board wasn't set up for that. Um, it had to be completely reorganized in order to accommodate an actual leader or, you know, one that oversees all the chairman yeah. of boards. But yeah. um, what David, other than that, right, yeah. right, right, right. And, and so it's like even now where people are, it's become so like our short term memory of like, well, who's going to take over after DM? Well, nobody, because nobody was ever supposed to take over for LRH. <laughs> like yeah, that was true. the, you know. Unless there's a, a maniacal psychopathic narcissist in the wings waiting to take over for DM, and then it'll probably repeat itself. How did they figure out, because these are C organization members, and it would take, you'd have to know something about technology of preservation on what kind of material, do, who did the research? How did, there had to have been external help at some point to to maybe not create and dig out the vault. I don't know. I mean, kind of, kind of walk me through it. Who well, was advising on that? So that's, what's funny. Um, there wasn't the internet. <laughs> no. And, and um, even at the time, like we knew what it was basically taking a project and saying, here's your goal. And then working backwards from that. And so uh, it, uh, unfortunately, a lot of this is covered in the on the Scientology website about the preservation, and it's actually very well put together videos. Um, not that I'm saying anybody should go there. If you do use a VPN or, or do whatever you need to do, um, yeah. but it's actually quite interesting. And I, even on my channel, I have a few shorts that go over. I snipped, I might, I might or might not have snipped some of their <laughs> footage. Um, <laughs> so um and i have no intention of monetizing so they can take it and do whatever they want with it honestly so um 
but yeah, the, the, so the process basically went that we're going to need to archive, um, on plates and we're going to need to archive on paper and we're going to, so they went and found the, the most archival paper that is around and then they tried to improve on it. And so that was outsourcing the most popular paper where people were putting really important documents that they needed to last a thousand years. Right. Well, and subsequently with, when you have a lot of money and, a, and an intention behind you, like they created a lot of patents, they created a lot of, um, almost like even when we built the, the underground storage facilities, we were using cutting edge technology at the time to create very strong, but lightweight concrete. You know, because we needed to stack our um, in our corrugated tubes, we had to have so much. We wanted them to move in case there was a flood or in case there was earthquakes. And you, you know, certain concrete it gets. Um, you you play with that brittle strength weight kind of ratio. So we were using fiberglass sh shards in our concrete. Um, you know, and we were doing just like over the top stuff at the time. 